Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by a contribution from Kimmy, and here is her story. Hi, Ollie. I'm back. I've wanted to write you several times over the past year to hear your opinions, then don't because I just want to forget about Big Les, my narc mom, and put it all behind me. I feel like I will never be free from her until she is dead, but I wonder. Let me tell you something. Even when they die, <laughs> it's, it, it's like and I'm finding this out. When they, even when they die, you know, it's a different. So you're free from them, but still, still, you the, the, the anger, the anger, the anger, the anger over all of it. Because it's closure. But the closure brings you more anger. I really don't know how long it has been since I went no contact with her. Maybe seven years, but she will not leave me alone. I have not seen nor spoke to my younger brother in years, but we never had a close relationship, and he seemed more like a distant cousin to me. I have, however, I have, however, had a close relationship with my older brother throughout most of my life even though I walked on eggshells around him until four years ago when Big Les dropped her case in court against him for grandparent visitation with his son and their relationship was growing. So I kind of stepped down and he just seemed too angry for me to be around. Just occasional phone calls until I could not take the, ver the verbal battering anymore. I don't even know if he knows how badly he speaks to me but he has definitely damaged goods because of her. I did reach out to him four months ago, stupidly hoping he would be happy to hear from me and we could catch up. I was wrong. After 30 minutes, I ended the call and cried for an hour. I feel like an orphan and hope to have at least one family member in my life. Everyone I was close to from my, enti from my entire life is either dead now or have, gone no or have had to go no contact with and it's pretty lonely at times. <clears throat> That's the reality of the situation, Kimmy. You can't keep any of them. You can't keep any of them in your life. They all have to go. Because this is what happens. It's all toxic and it's all damaging. And it sucks and it can be and it's depressing. But that's reality. I have health issues and battle with depression, so I've become an introvert. I still enjoy life and have kept my mind active and have crafts and have crafts and such and pets and feel grateful for what I do have. But I cannot stop getting triggered by my mom. Just, in, just within the past year, she showed up at my door crying to be let in. I was having such a good day and I freaked out and told them, her enabler hubby, to leave me alone and not come back. I slammed the door in her face and locked it. It took me days to recover from. It's the violation. It's the rage. It's the rage. It's like I'm slamming doors in your face and you still won't respect my boundaries. This is the battle we have to deal with. <clears throat> About five years ago, Big Les sent me a package with letters, some dating back into the 70s, that I wrote to her mother. I was very close to my gram, and when she died, Les went through all of her stuff. In those letters, I spoke of the abuse I was suffering and how much I wanted to run away and stuff. Well, the incriminating pages were removed before she mailed them to me. I received nothing else from her belongings as a token of remembrance. Then about four years ago, I received the package in the mail. It was my baby book that I have since burned. And then came, then came a package of things my mom, then came a package of things she had kept of my, she had kept of my son, like pictures he had drawn for her as a child, even an old pacifier. Then she and her hubby come out of the blue for a visit. When I opened the door, she immediately stuck her foot in the door so I couldn't close it, and they forced their way inside. What? Call the cops. 
And I'm not sure if you remember that last year she informed me she has Alzheimer's, which was one of the questions I asked my brother on that last phone call. He responded nasty. Well, that is what her doctors say, so yes. I was hoping for, for his insight, but he was so angry about everything I said or asked about, so I didn't get his take on it. So it seems Big Les ha has her sons in her life celebrating holidays and such together. And early this summer, a cousin was trying to get a family pic a picnic reunion set up. No one gets it. I unfriended all the estranged cousins, etc. I want nothing to do with it. If any of them truly wanted to have a relation, I was available. Not anymore. Not that I don't want it, but Les made me the bad guy and I will not wear those shoes. Because you keep calling and you're like digging for information. Like you have to cut it off. Any interaction is going to be is going to be turned turn out bad. Period. You're still trying to dig for some kind of relationship with your family that's not there. It never was. It never was. Why is this still ringing? In September 2005, I sent Les a very long, detailed letter that I read to my therapist beforehand. Her response was a phone call, kind of like, that may be true, but you X, Y, Z. Last month, I received a copy of that letter in the mail. She headlined it, please review this, your letter that I have annotated and discuss it and, and discuss it majeure to majeure. Please, every person deserves their day in court. As I said, the letter was long. Right, like th that's what she wants. Look, she wants her day in court so she can put you on trial. Understand that. She wants her day in court, not for herself, for you. Because if she says it's true, but you X, Y, Z, you're playing her game. Stop sending her letters. Stop contacting her. Stop contacting your brother. Stop it. Stop it. It's all going to end up bad. It always does. She don't want to defend herself. She wants to prosecute you. That's what she means. As I said, the letter was long, 11 pages long that she had in blue ink with her notes in green. I started my letter. I speak those words to free myself. I, oh, I st Oh, I stated in my letter, I speak these words to free myself. Les writes, free yourself from what? A self-imposed martyrdom? It's an attack. You're on trial. Like, stop walking into this. Stop walking into the narcissist courtroom. Stop it. Stop it. You can't win. You're already guilty. Well, the entire letter just questioned and was just questioned and accusatory and defensive implications. It was a prosecution. I told you that. She wanted her day in court to prosecute you, not to def not to defend herself. It was horrible, and again, I was left reeling in anxiety, pain, and sadness. It just never ends. Stop going into their courtroom. Stop it. Stop it. Don't enter their courtroom. So I got over that and began to feel better. And yesterday I got a card in the mail. My birthday coming up. Well, lo and behold, was not a birthday card. It was a card with her, with her writing. It must be nice to live in an ivory tower. I never know you put yourself there. No input, no output, no one to answer to of four. Or four. Above and beyond all others, climb down from this tower. Your family misses you. That made me sick writing that. <clears throat> I feel sick. I think maybe she would be happy if I was dead. I just want her to leave me alone, Kimmy. <clears throat> She's not. And until you stop responding to this, until you start doing return the senders like not let, like letting her know you're not even opening this stuff you're still entering her courtroom 
you're still falling into her trap. You have to cut it all off. She wanted her day in court. It wasn't what you thought. It was to prosecute you, which is what it's always been about. Stop going into her courtroom. Reject all correspondence. Don't even open the door. Why even? How did she get in? Why did you even open the door? You got no peephole? You can't look out? Set up a camera. They got camera systems that you can buy for 20 bucks for, for your door. So you can see who's... You don't even have to open your door anymore. You got to think ahead. Stop thinking you can win in the narcissist courtroom. You can't. You can't. Stop trifling with these people. You can't win. So... I hope that helps, Kimmy. Thank you for your contribution and your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made, or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful. Because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you all, this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance.